Bobby Broyles and Tim McDonald here. Should be a really interesting matchup. Buckle up. If you're not watching, you got some problems. We've reached the final edition of this year's 12 Teams in 12 Days preview series presented by GEICO. Two days away from the start of the college football season, I'm Bobby Broyles, joined by my friend Thank Tim you, McDonnell in studio to break down William & Mary today. The Tribe made their first trip to the playoffs since 2010 and were CA football co-champions last year. 16 starters back, and that has to give Jimmy Laycock a nice smile on his face. Oh, God, yes it does. Indeed it does. A solid season for sure for William & Mary in 2015. 2-2 two two started, beat Lafayette, lose at UVA by six points. Then you shut out Stony Brook and lose at Delaware, and we're thinking to ourselves, well, is this the William Murray of the past? But no, William Murray gets it done. Mm -hmm. uh, six straight wins down the stretch, a co-champion of CAA football. Mm -hmm. Yes, you won a playoff game. A lot of people forget that. Wayne Mary won a playoff game, beat Duquesne at home. You lose to Richmond, though, twice in the same season, and the last one obviously coming in the playoffs. Uh, you have to imagine that one sat with this team in the offseason heading yeah. in. But... Like you mentioned, so many guys back, and you think, is there any quarterback in CAA football like Steve Cooley last year who made such a progression individually? Yep. I, I really, the guy stood mm -hmm. out to you, especially coming back into this season. You, this is his third year as a starter. Mm -hmm. Last year through for 62.7% completion percentage. I think that was the biggest factor with yep. Steve Cooley in that offense. Really looked like he was in control, really took over that offense and knew what to do at the right times. 16 touchdowns, also added three touchdowns rushing. And you mentioned a guy like Kendall Anderson. I mean, how, how much mm. power did he add to that offense yep. last season? We all thought McGill wasn't even, yeah, was wasn't even essentially back. the starter. Yep. Turns into the go-to guy. 16 touchdowns rushing for him, over 1,400 yards. Mm -hmm. And you talk about Devontae Dedman, another guy at, at receiver, Bob, who's still one of the most dangerous threats, and yes. he's still progressing. Mm -hmm. He's only a junior this season. Mm -hmm. He had eight touchdowns receiving last year. Andrew Kaskin is back, the tight end. Armstrong, Kujak, Kevin Hart is back at wide receiver. So. Offensively, I, I'm very comfortable saying that William & Mary, out of all the teams that we've previewed, William & Mary is probably the most solid at every position offensively mm -hmm. heading into 2016. Third in scoring offense, third in rushing offense, third in pass offense, third in total offense. You, mm -hmm. you get the idea. Yep. It's just something we haven't seen from William Mary. I think that's exciting heading into 2016, knowing that William Mary right now offensively is clicking on all cylinders, and I think it will translate and move over into 2016. And it will definitely help with the kicking game as well. Thank Can't you. I, I knew Nick you were going to do that. Yes, we haven't not talked about any kickers or punters, Nick Dorka and Hunter Windmiller. Uh, shout out to you guys because preseason first teamers on CA and yep. you talk about a kicking game that's strong for William Mary they're going to have that as well. Absolutely. We got to catch up with coach Laycock at media today and this is what he had to say about his high powered offense. Well, how high powered I don't know. We'll see. If we don't turn it over we can do all right, I believe. You know, Steve clearly a quarterback to be a senior and he's very experienced. He understands their offense and uh, he just got to understand now to pull down and run some the ball sometimes, you know, make some plays himself with his feet cuz he's very gifted that way. Yeah, uh, Kendall Anderson's an outstanding running back. Had a great year for us last year. Devontae Dedman is a, a big play wide receiver, not a big person but a big play guy. And that, but I think the thing is it'll drive us offensively will be offensive line. I mean, we got Four starters back. The only thing we lost our center through graduation, but the rest of them are back, uh, and uh, they look to be healthy. And, and that's something that we've uh, battled for the last couple of years. But these guys, if they stay healthy, they can be as good offensive line as we had in some quite some time. On the other side of the ball, Tim, this Tribe defense has been dynamic these past few seasons, and they lost a lot of significant players like DeAndre Houston Carson and Luke Rhodes to graduation. Yeah, not only to graduation, but two guys who right now are fighting to make a professional roster at the NFL level. Yeah. So not only were those two seniors who played a lot of football, but two guys who had an immediate impact for that defense, were the leaders of that defense. A lot of new faces, and I, I'm interested to see how that translates, especially early on. Mm -hmm. Think about William & Mary, you think of a, a defense that is very solid, a defense that might have some turnover but there's always guys developing and yep. you think of Trevor Andrews the defensive coordinator has a knack for doing things like that all the time I mean not to make the comparisons but you look at Mike Riley you look at Luke Rhodes even even Houston Carson guys who played and were pretty good younger but by the time they were juniors mm. and seniors just turned into these studs yep Again, not to say that that's going to happen with this year's group, but I do think you look at the returners. Peyton Grider is a guy who I think could contend to be a first-team All-CAA guy. Mm -hmm. Led this team in sacks with five and tackles for loss with ten last year. Senior captain, okay? Yes. The next guy on the list, Trey Reed, another senior, team captain. Three interceptions. He had two in the playoffs and ten pass breaks up. And then you look at the linebacker position, Stephen Lovenow and Marcus Harvey, both seniors, both back. Six in rush defense, six in pass defense, six in total defense. 
I don't think the defense last year wowed you at any times or mm -hmm. made you say, wow, that, that's a really tough team and we're going to have to buckle it up this week. But they got the job done. Yep. So many leaders back that we just mentioned, senior guys mm -hmm. who know the system, know what Coach Andrews wants, know what Coach Laycock wants. That, I think that's only going to benefit the Tribe even more in 2016. Take a listen now as Coach Laycock talks about some of the players that will have to step up on the defensive end. Well, I think, you know, we're going to have – we lost some good players there up front. We lost, you know, Tyler Clater, linebacker, Luke Rhodes. And secondary, obviously, DeAndre Houston, Carson. You know, uh, a guy like Peyton Grider, defensive end, is going to really have to have a good year for us. We're going to have to get more uh, pressure out of our end so far as on the on pass rush and things like that. Marcus Harvey, a linebacker, can be an outstanding linebacker. But now it's, it's, it's going to be more on him. There's not going to be a Luke Rhodes inside or Zach Fetters inside to help him out. He's got to work with some younger guys and make some plays. And then, you know, secondary-wise, you know, Mike Barter, the guy that stepped in there last year and really did a nice job uh, in his role. He's going to have to step it up. Uh, Trey Reed is a good corner. He's got to continue to be very consistent. So, again, we've got the – We've got some guys there, but they're, they'll be, you know, and that's what happens every year, really. You have guys that have played, but now they're going to be playing this year in a different role and how they adjust to that role and how they handle that role and how they continue to improve in that role. A lot of extra excitement in Williamsburg this year with the opening of the renovations to Zabel Stadium, just like UNH. Yep. Will that optimism of the past success of this program, along with upgrades to the home facility, make an impact on this season when you look at the Tribe schedule? Well, one of the lines I love from Coach Lakehawk heading into this year, he, he said, you know, this program has, has earned the stadium. It, just, mm -hmm. it wasn't just give it to them. It's something that's earned. And New Hampshire and William Mary, you make the comparisons, but it, it is true. Yep. Both of them have done so well at their home stadiums already. Mm -hmm. I loved William Mary's Zabel Stadium before yeah. the renovations. It's still <laughs> one of my favorite places. But now yeah. to see what they've done uh, on that other side, mm -hmm. to see a, a beautiful press box, but they still incorporated some of the brick, some of the, the history that is Zabel Stadium, it's, cool st it's still there. It's still there. That's going to be beautiful to see. It's going to be interesting. I think it will translate to a little bit more excitement coming home. And, and now teams are, are a little bit, okay, we got to go to Zabel now. Okay, that's, that's really nice too. Yeah. You do have to wait, though. That's the only downside of this stadium. A, the opener is September 17th versus Norfolk mm -hmm. State. Play NC State in the opener. But I think the schedule sets up nicely. I mean, three straight non-conference games to start the season. Mm -hmm. At NC State, a, a fairly manageable FBS team. Yeah. If you want to say an FBS team is manageable, it's mm -hmm. obviously not. But yeah. I think for the Tribe, heading to NC State, not too far of a travel trip. Mm -hmm. Then you head to Hampton, and then, like we said, the opener versus Norfolk State at the new Zabel Stadium. Outside of the first two travel games, I mean, after that, it, the schedule really isn't too tough travel-wise. At New Hampshire, mm -hmm. obviously tough. At James Madison, obviously tough. Stony Brook and Towson are also away. Four games outside of the state of Virginia, though, and four CA home games. And, of course, down the stretch, Delaware, Maine, and Richmond to end yes, the season, exactly. as always. But if you're the Tribe, I like the way this season sets up. Three non-conference games, kind of get, get that out of the way, mm -hmm. regardless of what happens, then get into CA play. With William Mary's schedule, year in and year out, it seems, schedule sets up nicely, and then just the middle of the season and down, it's... It's a battle every week, yes, as it, it always is in CA football, but mm -hmm. especially with their schedules in past years. So I think that's no different this season. The Tribe opens their season in Raleigh, North Carolina versus NC State out of the ACC this Thursday night, September the 1st at 7.30 on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app. And if you want to know what game day is like for Trey Reed and Steve Cooley, you can find out that now on cafootball.com yeah. as well as our social media platforms. And if you missed any of the 12 teams in 12 Day segments, along with our student-athlete features that we've talked about a lot. You can see them now as well on SaveFootball.com. That completes our 2016 series of 12 teams in 12 days. Appreciate you guys tuning in, but we are not done no, yet, are no, we? No, we're we are go. never Start done. It up. Never done. Always Tom back. Tomorrow we'll break down all the Week 1 matchups across the league with the 2016 season debut of this week in CA football. You don't want to miss it. See you tomorrow.